Previously, we introduced the concept of trigonometric functions of acute angles and tied the idea to right triangles. This time, we are going to generalize the concept to include angle domains of arbitrary size in degree or radian measure where whether they are positive, negative, or zero. Now, Consider the four figures below the rectangular coordinate system. Suppose theta is an arbitrary angle in standard position and P with coordinate AB is a point R units away from the origin on the terminal side of theta. We can form six ratios involving R and the point P. These ratios are in fact the sign cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant theta. Now, um, from the previous concept of trigonometric function, we were able to find the ratios from the acute triangle, okay, from the right triangle. Now, in this case, in the first quadrant, you can produce a line here to produce a right triangle so you can consider this side B and this one is side A okay now in the second in the second example where the terminal side is in the second quadrant okay if you get this line here the angle is this angle here is an obtuse angle it's not an acute angle so we don't have a concept of finding the trigonometric ratios in obtuse angle but we can produce a triangle through this and this is the right triangle and we can have this as our side B and we can have this one as our side A now we can take this one as our angle okay in the third again um, we have to produce we have to find ways to produce a right triangle so we can have this right triangle here and this is our B and this is our A and the hypotenuse will remain R in the fourth quadrant same case we can produce this line here to produce right triangle and this side here is B and this side here is A. This method of forming right triangle by dropping a perpendicular line from point AB to the horizontal axis is called reference angle. Okay, So this one here, the theta here, is equivalent to the reference angle in the first example. In this case, this is our reference angle. Actually, that is alpha. And here... This is our reference angle, and in this case, this is our reference angle. Okay, the concept of reference angle in finding the ratios or in finding the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant is very important since uh, we have a concept already of finding the trig function with with regards to the right triangle. And later on, we will discuss reference angles and reference triangles in details so in here the six ratios are defined or the six functions are defined by sine theta which is b over r again b is the opposite side and r is the hypotenuse also The cosine theta is A over R, where A is the adjacent side. The tangent theta is B over A, with the condition that A is not equal to 0. Then we have the cosecant theta is R over B, with the condition that B is not equal to 0. Then we have the secant theta, which is R over A, with the condition that A is not equal to 0. And then the cotangent theta is 
a over b with the condition also that b is not equal to 0. And take note here, our r, by the Pythagorean principle, this is equivalent to a squared plus b squared, and r is greater than 0. Also, the point a, b is an arbitrary point. Arbitrary so using this definition, using this concept, we will be able to solve the values of the six trigonometric functions where P is given. Example, so we have this one. Find the value of each of the six trig functions with P with, ordinate, with coordinates negative 3 and negative 4 on each terminal side. So, where this point is located, x is negative and y is negative. So, this point is located in the third quadrant. So, therefore, the terminal side of the angle is in the third quadrant. Suppose this is our rectangular coordinate system. And this is our side. So, suppose this is our P, which is negative 3, negative 4. So, by the concept that we have here as the definition of these six ratios of the trig functions, we just have to produce a right triangle here so that we can use them in finding the six functions. So, in this case, our right triangle is this one. And... This is our negative 3, and this is our negative 4. Now, how do we find this one? Note that r is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared, and our a squared is negative 3 squared plus negative 4 squared, and that is... 9 plus 16 that is plus minus 25 but since r is greater than 0 then we can consider 5 okay r here is 5 now since we already have a b and r we can now write the six trig functions so what is our sine theta sine theta again is b over r and our b is negative 4 and our r is 5 or simply this is negative 4 over 5 the cosine theta is a over r which is negative 3 over 5 or this is negative 3 over 5 then for the tangent theta is b over a our b is negative 4 our a is negative 3 and this is 4 over 3. For the cosecant theta, it's r over b, so that is 5 over negative 4 or negative 5 over 4. For the secant theta, it's, it's r over a, which is 5 over negative 3, that is negative 5 over 3. For the cotangent theta, which is a over b, it's negative 3 over negative 4, which is 3 4. So these are now the exact values of the six trig functions given that P is negative 3, negative 4. Another example. Another example. Find the value of each of the other five trig functions for an angle theta given that theta is a four quadrant angle and sine theta is negative four over five so we have solution let's draw first our rectangular coordinate system it is said here that our theta is a four quadrant angle so this one this is a four quadrant angle so our p is somewhere here but what is our p there Take note that the sine theta is negative 4 over 5. And again, the sine theta is 
b over r. Since r is always positive, we note here that our b is negative 4. Okay? Our b is negative 4 and our r is 5. Again, from the Pythagorean principle, which is r is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared, and a is not given, so we can have this one as r squared equals a squared plus b squared, or r squared minus b squared equals a squared, or a is equal to square root of r squared minus b squared. But what is our r squared? Our r squared is 5 squared minus our b squared is negative 4 squared. So that is 25 minus 16 and 25 minus 16 is square root of 9. It is plus minus 3. But what is A in the fourth quadrant? Again, A is the x-axis in the fourth quadrant. So we get that A is positive 3. Why? Because in the fourth quadrant, our x-axis is always positive. So now we have the B. We have the B, we have the R, and we also have the A. So it is easy now to look for the other five trig functions. So we have the sine theta is negative 4 over 5. That's given. Then the cosine theta is A over R, which is 3 over 5. Then the tangent theta is b over a which is negative 4 over 3 equals negative 4 over 3 then the cosecant theta is r over b where r is 5 and b is negative 4 so this is negative 5 over 4 for the secant theta it's r over a where r is 5 and a is 3 and then the cotangent theta is a over b where a is 3 and b is negative 4 or this is negative 3 fourths. so these are the other five trig functions or the exact values of the five trig functions given that sine theta is negative 4 over three. next is trigonometric functions with real number domains for x and real number we define these six functions sine x is equal to sine x radians cos x is cos x radians and so on and so forth so in this case we just do not write radians for simplicity so when we encounter like sine x or sine 5 it means sine 5 radians that is for the general concept of trig functions now let's proceed to sign properties of the trigonometric functions. Consider this rectangular coordinate system where um, we have four types of angles. This one, then this one, the reference angle of this angle, and then the other one, and the other one. So we are looking at the sine properties of the trig functions in four different quadrants so first is for the sine x note that the sine x is b over r suppose this is our quadrant one quadrant two quadrant three and quadrant four Notice that for the first quadrant, our B is positive and our R is always positive. So positive divided by positive, our sign is positive. For the second quadrant, our B is positive and our R is also positive. So that's positive over positive. In the third quadrant, this is our B and B in the third quadrant a, which is parallel to the y-axis is negative 
and R is positive. So negative divided by positive, it's negative. For the fourth quadrant, our B is also negative. So therefore, this is negative. How about the cosine X, which is A over R? For the first quadrant, which is this one is A. This is also A. For the first quadrant, A is positive and R is positive. So this is positive. And then for the second quadrant, A is negative, which is the x-axis. And then the R is positive, so this is negative. For the third quadrant, A is negative and R is positive, so this is negative. For the fourth quadrant, A is positive and R is positive, so this is positive. Now for the tan x, this is b over a. For the first quadrant, b is positive and a is positive, so this is positive. For the second quadrant, b is positive but a is negative, so this is negative. For the fourth quadrant, uh, for the third quadrant, a is negative and b is negative, so negative divided by negative, it's positive. For the fourth quadrant, B is negative and A is positive, so this is negative. So if we continue with the other three, uh, we can have these sign properties in four quadrants. So this is the complete sign properties for the six trig functions in four different quadrants. Now observe that in the definition observe here in the definition the sine x is b over r so we have this ratio b over r and we also have ratio which is r over b now if we multiply these two this is simply one but what is b over r b over r is sine x and r over b is cosecant x which is 1 or from here we can have sine x which is 1 over cosecant x or cosecant x is equal to 1 over sine x so this characteristic of sine x times cosecant x equals 1 is called um, reciprocal identity so sine and cosine sine and cosecant are reciprocal identities that's one the other one we have a over r and multiplying to r over a is one but a over r is cosine x and r over a is secant x equals one so therefore we have co cosine x is equal to 1 over secant x or secant x is equal to 1 over cosine x. So in this case, cosine and secant are reciprocal identity. And also we have tan x, uh, sorry. Also we have b over a times a over b equals 1 and b over a is tan x and a over b is cotangent x equals 1 which makes it tan x is equal to 1 over cotangent x or cotangent x is equal to 1 over tan x so this three cases here are called reciprocal identities we will discuss identities further in the next episodes in the next chapter and in the next discussions maybe we, uh, we just have to mention these reciprocal identities here in connection with the sign properties of the six trig functions in four different quadrants as you can see guys we can have this simple 
understanding of the sign so we can have this one as s this is t and this is c s here stands for sign and what is the identity of uh, what is the reciprocal of sine it's cosecant it means as you can see here s gets the first quadrant and the second quadrant it means that in the first and the second quadrant they are positive but in the third and the fourth quadrant they are negative so as you can see here in the first and the second quadrant the sign is positive same with the cosecant and then in the other quadrants they are negative now for the t t means tangent and its reciprocal which is cotangent so it means t here takes the first quadrant and the third quadrant what does it mean further? It means that in the first and the third quadrant, they are positive. So here, as you can see for the tangent, positive in the first and positive in the third. Same with the cotangent, positive in the first and positive in the third. Also, for the last one, the C here means cosine. Also, it's reciprocal, which is secant. So C takes the first quadrant and also the fourth quadrant meaning in the first quadrant cosine is positive also positive in the fourth quadrant same with its reciprocal which is the secant x and also which is the second x which is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant so um, you have to remember the sign properties of the six trig functions in the four different quadrants because that is very important in solving functions or solving equations involving trigonometric functions so let's have some exercise set so please um, try to answer this exercise set for letter a you have to find the six the values of the six trig functions given these points in the terminal side of the angles so for letter b you have to find the uh, exact value of each of the other five trig functions for the given conditions 